The example of Yonah or Jonah and Nineveh in the Tanakh shows us very clearly and is one of many, many examples in the, in the scriptures that the Most High changes his mind, is quite happy to change his mind. He does not decree every single thing that takes place, is going to take place in future. He changes his mind and he responds to the actions of humans even when he has stated that something is going to happen. If humans respond in a particular way, and I'd say us in that if angels respond in a particular way, then he can and does very often uh, respond accordingly. There are so, so many scriptures that, that kind of make this clear. Uh, on on numerous occasions, and at least and at least two or three occasions, uh, Moshe, it, the, the Most High says, "I'm going to destroy the nation of Israel. They've just annoyed me too much. They're just too sinful. They're too uh, unrighteous." And Moshe steps into the breach and prays for them and in, and in pe entreats the Most High to to not do what he said he's going to do. And Yahweh relents from what he's going to do. Over and over again, this happens so many times in the scriptures. And I want to show you that the example of Jonah or Yonah, the prophet is a classic example. So you know the, you know the story, Yonah is told to go to uh, the people of Nineveh and he's told to go there and preach to them and tell them that in 40 days the, uh, the city will be overthrown. So uh, let's read it. Let me read, uh, I won't read all of it in the, in the uh, interest of time, but let's have a look. It says, so here we go. The word, of Yah, the, the word of Yah came to Yonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Yonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of Yahweh. Now Nineveh was, ex was an exceedingly great city, three days journey in breadth. And uh, Yonah began to, verse four, chapter three, verse four, Yonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Okay, so the Most High has given him this very clear message. 40 days, Nineveh is going to be overthrown. Now, if it was the case that the Most High decrees everything and what he's, everything that he says is, is absolutely decreed and is definitely going to happen no matter what in that kind of um, predestination kind of way, that Calvinistically predestination kind of way, then it wouldn't matter what anybody does because he's proclaimed it. But what happens? Well, we know what happens, but I'll read it anyway. Verse 5, the people of Nineveh believed God, believed Elohim. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. The word reached the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out mightily to Elohim. Less, uh, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? Here's the key. Why did the king decree all this stuff? Why did the, the people of Nineveh repent and uh, put on sackcloth and ashes and fast? Why? Because, look, who knows? Elohim may turn and relent may relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. And when Elohim saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, Elohim relented of the disaster that he said he, was, he would do and he did not do it. Now this tr of course will trouble certain, a certain type of um, theological view which basically has it that God's will is just everything and everything that happens is God's will is, is the most high's will and there's no other thing that happens except what happens in his will. And, but here we have the Most High said something. He's going to do something in forty days. That was his will. He was going to destroy Nineveh in forty days, overthrow the city, and then, because they repented and turned, it says very clearly the Most High relented. In other words, he turned away from the evil, from the disaster that he was going to do to the children of Nineveh, the city of Nineveh. Now we know that uh, the prophet Yonah got very annoyed about this. And basically the reason why he, in, when he was first com commissioned by the Most High to go and give this word to Nineveh, he ran away. And it took the whole incident on the ship and him being thrown into the water and being swallowed up by the big beast, the big fish, for him to finally go and do what he was told. And then in chapter four, there's the interesting exchange between him and the Most High where he says to the Most High, I knew, this is what I knew would happen. And I'm so annoyed. I didn't want to do this because I know that you are, it says there in verse 
chapter 4 verse 2 I knew that you were a gracious L and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster <laughs> and he says basically he asked the most high to kill him because he's just so annoyed and then you know the exchange continued very very powerful very very powerful scriptures writings here it's nothing new there's nothing new there because remember when the Most High showed uh, Moshe his glory and he's and, he, and what is it in, I think it's in Exodus chapter 32 Exodus chapter 32 I won't go there but basically it, it's something it says something like Yahweh Yahweh uh, you know abundant in loving kindness gracious and well then let's let's quickly go to it sorry sorry about this quick tangent but I think it's important and then uh yeah, it's in it's in uh, I think it's I think it's Exodus chapter thirty two, is it? And he basically shows the Most High his glory, and uh, anyway, well, I, I can't find it now. But the po the point being that that is what Yahweh is. Yahweh is merciful. He is gracious. The Most High is compassionate. He forgives sin, even when he says he's going to do something catastrophic to a nation. And I would say that, that by the same token that applies to an individual, if that nation or if that individual repents from his wicked way and turns to the Most High and seeks after his faith, that is what the Most High wants and he will respond accordingly by forgiving. And this is clearly stated by the Prophet or by the Most High to the Prophet Jeremiah or Jeremiah. This is the potter and the and the and the the potter's house where he goes to the potter's house and the potter uh, Jeremiah this is the potter um, is making a vessel but the, the vessel turns out a bit rubbish so he he smashes it all up and starts to remake it again and then the the, the message of the, the the application of the sort of visual parable is this verse 5 then the word of Yahweh came to me O house of Israel can I not do with you as this potter has done declares Yahweh behold like the clay in the potter's hand so are you in my hand O house of Israel if at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it and if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil I will relent of the disaster that I intended to do to it and then the flip side is the case. So if, if the Most High says he's going to bring about evil in the nation and they repent, he will relent from the evil that he said he was going to do. And then in verse 9, And if at any time I declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it, and if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will relent of the good that I intended to do to it. And so on and so forth. And then actually verse 11 is important. Now theref therefore, Say to the men of Yehuda and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says Yahweh, Behold, I am shaping disaster against you and devising a plan against you. Return every one from his evil way and amend your ways and your deeds. You see, so he says, I'm bringing disaster upon you. I want you to repent. I want you to turn away from, from your evil and wicked ways. And so on and so forth. The point really uh, that I'm getting at is this. This is really important to understand. This this opens up, hopefully it will open up in you a, a whole area of, of, of contemplation and, and, and scripture study and prayer to, to consider and to realize that there is a point to prayer. There is a point to changing our evil ways. There is a point to repentance. There is a point to everything that we do. Yahweh, the Most High, has not set everything in stone. He has not decreed everything. Some things, yes, he has decreed. Like we know that the Most High Son, Yahushua, is going to return. Yahushua, the Mashiach of, is, is the Mashiach of Israel. He is going to rule and reign over this earth and so on. That's decreed. You know, those things are decreed. Certain things are decreed, but other things are not decreed in the sense of they are absolutely definitely going to happen no matter what anybody does. No. And knowing this, I think, starts to op opens the whole door as to like our prayer lives. When we pray, what are we praying for? You know, we're not praying. We're not only praying, oh, your will be done. I want this, but no, 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 let your will be done. No, we're praying to the Most High and we're asking him. We're seeking. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Ask and, the, ask and it shall be given. You know, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. I want to tell you about one scripture, one last scripture before I head out. One last scripture in uh, from the uh, from Jacob or James, the brother of Yehoshua. And it's all about sickness. And I, I don't want to focus on sickness in this video because I don't have time. But 
You know, Martin Luther really hated the uh, the epistle of James. He called it a right strawy epistle. And I can understand why, because Jacob, the book of Jacob, or the, the letter of Jacob, the epistle of Jacob, James, is full of very down-to-earth, blunt teaching about various things, such as faith and works. You know, he disagrees with the whole idea of, no, it's faith only. No, it's not by faith. The only place in the scripture where you see the term faith only or faith alone is in Jacob, where he says, it's not by faith alone, but faith has to be with works. But I want to talk, I want to talk specifically about chapter five. And he says this, you know, he ends, he ends his whole letter with a bunch of sort of very straightforward, blunt instructions to the Israelites that he's speaking to, the Israelite believers in Yoshua that he's speaking to. And he says this, verse 13, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the master. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the master will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer, and this is what I want to focus on, the prayer of a righteous person has great power and it is working in other versions it says the prayer uh, the fervent effectual prayer of a righteous one avails much and then he gives the example of how elia or elijah a man, was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed fervently that it might not rain and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth and then he prayed again and the heaven gave rain the earth bore its fruit uh I mean, let me just end with that. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. That's a very comforting scripture for me as someone who did wander for, for, for a very, very long time. But the prayer of a righteous person has great power and is working. You know, that's really important to hold on to that. If, if you're going through something in your life that, you know is bringing you is bringing you suffering is bringing other, other suffering it be a disease be it uh, any kind of condition be it calamity be any of these kinds of things misfortune and you're a child of the most high pray pray decide in your heart that you agree with the most high decide that you believe that he can and will heal decide and believe that he will deliver you from whatever it is and pray and pray and pray and be effectual and fervent in that pray because scriptures show all over the place the most high hears hears prayer and he answers our prayers but as i say, i didn't want to talk about uh, healing particularly in this video and sickness in this video but the point there i just really wanted to make there is that the Most High listens to our prayers. He he view he looks at our actions. He sees how we respond, and he changes his ways. He changes his mind accordingly. Make what you will of that. But that's all I wanted to share. Take care. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.